Hi. Um, Simon's just caught me doing a little homework on the Boer War, or as we call it now, the South African War. And in particular, on this fellow. And um, that sort of prompted us to decide to make, in our next series of videos uh, on the South African War, which I am going to call Five Generals of the Natal Campaign. And what a better way to start than with General Sir George White, who was General Officer Commanding in Natal at the outbreak of war in October 1899. <clears throat> George Stuart White was born in uh, County Londonderry, Northern Ireland in 1835. Educated in England, he attended Sandhurst and in uh, 1853 joined the uh, 27th Regiment of Foot, the Innes Killings, as an ensign. The regiment was then posted to India and George White would spend uh, his entire career effectively with the India Army, so to speak. Um, during the Indian Mutiny, he found himself in Peshawar. Ten years after joining the Army, um, he transferred from the 27th Regiment to the famous 92nd Regiment of Foot, the Gordon Highlanders. By this stage, he was a captain. Promoted to Major, he distinguished himself in two battles of the Second Anglo-Afghan War. The first, the Battle of Charya Saib in October 1879, and the second, about a year later, the Battle of Kandahar in September of 1880. Curiously, he was awarded a Victoria Cross for conspicuous gallantry in these two battles. So two incidents nearly one year apart, and I can't think of another award of the VC that has been made in similar circumstances. In addition to his military rank, he would um, uh, earn an impressive list of orders of chivalry. Orders the Companion of the Bath of St. Michael and St. George, a Star of India, etc. Etc. Further promotions followed to Major General and then in 1895 to the substantive rank of Lieutenant General. And it was in this rank that he was appointed Quartermaster General, a uh, post based in London, um, to the entire British Army. And he was in this post when the war clouds began to gather in Southern Africa and the decision was taken to send him out to Southern Africa as General Officer Commanding British Troops in Natal. At this time, he was 64 years old. And um, in military terms, he was an old man. And the British would learn during this war, well, one hopes they would learn, was that the uh, command of men in action should be given to leaders who are a great deal younger. And the older men, like Sir George, should possibly be left <coughs> Uh, with the logistics. He boards at Tantollin Castle in September of 1899 and sets sail for the Cape. Um, this is a curious appointment. Uh, General White is hopelessly unqualified for this position. He had never been to Southern Africa in his life. He was totally unaware of the conditions he might face. And um, he was also ignorant of the Boers an enemy who had already proved themselves a formidable opposition to Britain um, in the war, Transvaal War, uh, 20 years earlier. On his arrival in Durban, uh, having uh, sailed up from the Cape, he met up with reinforcements which had been sent out from India and immediately had to take an important decision. To understand this, let's go back a little bit. General Sir Redvers Buller, based in Aldershot, had issued an advisory to British troops in Natal. And bear in mind, Buller had much experience of the Boers and of conditions. And Buller had said, place no troops north of the Tugela River. Now the Tugela River bisects this province of Natal. And Buller was hugely fearful that the highly mobile Boers would trap any British troops who had extended their communication lines too far north. When General White arrived in Durban, it was to discover a British force of over 4,000 men had been sent way north of the river to protect British coal mining interests in the town of Dundee. 
And the first thing he had to do was to decide whether they should be recalled or left where they were and fatefully decided to leave them where they were. And this in turn caused him to move the reinforcements also north of the Tugela River to the town of Ladysmith. <clears throat> the Boer advance begins in uh, October 1899 and they come sweeping down from the north uh, there will be a series of battles really characterized by blunders by both sides and General White would be present at the Battle of Elenslachter but as an observer. A few days later however with Boers gathering around the town of Ladysmith and the Transvaal Boers are now also reinforced by their comrades from the Free State coming over the mountain passes to the west and General White decided enough was enough and he determined to launch his full force of 14,000 men against these impudent farmers and what he termed the knockdown blow. He wanted one spectacular victory over the Boers, drive them back to their republics and bring this war to a short and glorious end. Unfortunately, it didn't quite work out like that. Um, the 30th of October would uh, come to be known as Mournful Monday as the Boers pretty much ran rings around Sir George White's force and in the end they would suffer more than 1,000 casualties and George White's nerve probably if it didn't break at that point he badly shaken uh, he withdrew into the town and the town was promptly besieged by the Boers. Back in London under the prompting of General Wolseley it was decided that White should be sacked and recalled. The problem of course was that um, they couldn't get hold of him to sack him in that he was trapped in Ladysmith and uh, it's, the siege didn't last for a few days as was anticipated. It dragged on in the end for 118 days and when eventually the relief force arrived General White had become quite a, a popular hero back in the UK a man who had kept the flag flying in his own words and thoughts of firing him were swept under the rug. Uh, General White was to say at that time probably filled with confidence and, and goodwill uh, that he had deliberately allowed his force to be besieged by the Boers as it served the British interests. Well it did but I think we're talking wisdom after the event here. Um, his health wasn't good <clears throat> and after a few months recuperating he in fact was appointed governor of Gibraltar, um, served in one or two minor posts and uh, further promotions would follow. He becomes a full general in 1900 and then in 1903 almost certainly as a reward for having uh, kept the flag flying in Ladysmith, Field Marshal. He will be governor of the Royal Hospital Chelsea from 1905 to 1912 until his death and he's buried back in Northern Ireland in County Antrim and uh, the wheel had turned its full circle.